right guys welcome back today we're back on electrical so i spent a bunch of time just kind of staring at this wall and figuring out exactly where all of my outlets are going to go but i definitely got it figured out now so i'm gonna have to do a couple things so i have an outlet at the very top this is going to be where my microwave is going to go i'm going to do 12 gauge on this circuit so i can do a 20 amp plug right here I have another outlet. This is going to be 14 gauge. This is going to be one of two outlets that I have. They're going to be on top of the kitchen counter. So this would be for appliances, anything that I want to plug in on top of the kitchen countertop. I'll have one over here and then one on this side as well. And then down here, I also have a few more outlets. This one here is going to be for the refrigerator and also the water dispenser. Right next to it here, I'm gonna put a six-way fuse block, and I'll explain why in just a second. And then over here, I'm gonna go with 12 gauge wire again for a 20 amp circuit. This is gonna be for my electric water heater. I decided on an electric unit this time. That's gonna sit right here. It's about eight gallons. From what I'm hearing, that should be perfectly fine for my setup and so the reason I'm putting another 24 volt fuse distribution right here is because I'm gonna have quite a few lights going on over here as well we're gonna have RGB LEDs on top of the upper cabinets for accent lighting I'm gonna have regular lighting strip underneath the cabinet just for regular lighting and then we're gonna have RGBW that's gonna be on the lip of the countertop and then again on the kick panel or on the toe kick excuse me it's going to be right down here so by the time you add up all of these together I really need something where i can plug all these fuses in and properly protect each circuit not that it's going to draw a bunch of power but it definitely needs some way to distribute it so i'm going to go ahead and grab the multi-tool and just cut out for these outlets I already have one down here that's for the fridge like I said and we've moved spots again pretty cool little spot here it's really overcast today and I have one outlet that's plugged in already this is also a 20 amp circuit this is right by my side door I'm gonna have a special cabinet uh, and this is gonna be where my one wheel is accessible from this side that way I can just grab it from in and out the door got porch light and ceiling lights on a dimmer so far that's been working out great I kind of just plugged this in so it would work that way I would have some kind of power to work at night and now that I have this outlet it's made things super convenient for example today I spent most of the day just reorganizing everything and cleaning up sweeping throwing away smaller materials that I don't need this is just what I keep in the van. Probably take you guys to my storage unit next time I go and show you what I have in here. This is all of my ceiling insulation that I have piled up here. And uh, this is kind of just what it looks like when you're building vans, uh, just kind of in parking lots. So um, not a bad trade off for the perfect weather. It's been bouncing between 63 to 68 degrees um, I wish it would be a little more sunny, but here next week it looks like we're going to get some great sunshine. And uh, it's been so overcast, I'm actually helping Mark charge his uh, house batteries. And uh, he's got a 48 volt system, so we've got that all plumbed in over here, over to that outlet. And so let's get a little check on the Victron app and see what's going on there. So I'm still, uh, we started this and I had like 70%. It says 161 amp hours have been consumed, but um, mistakenly I had my solar breaker turned off. The reason I actually wired in this outlet here is because I had a friend that wanted to charge his e-bike. And so I went ahead and just plugged that in. And, and so uh, it's been a couple days since we've gotten any solar on this setup. And that is the reason why it is low right now. 58% plus we've been charging 
quite the battery system next door as well. So, so far so good. Let's go ahead and get our multi-tool out and uh, get to work. So now we're going to go ahead and just remove all these panels. That way we can run the wires all behind. So we've got both of these wall panels off and I have all of my outlets marked exactly where they're gonna go. And so now I just need to basically tape up the wires and secure them exactly where they need to go. I need to use the router to run some vertical lines up to outlets all the way up here. I also need to make uh, room for some 16 gauge, 16.2 for the 24 volt up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start at this corner and just kind of work my way back over here and go from there. All right, so my first outlet is gonna be right here and that's gonna be this uh, yellow cable, the 12 gauge. So I'm gonna need to hit the router right here just to go up and we'll go from here. We also need to go branch off from this outlet to the one that's way up top as well for the microwave. So I'll go ahead and grab the router and uh, buzz this in real quick. All right, so I got all of my wires run exactly where the outlets are gonna go and also where anything 24 volt. So I'm ready to put the panels back on. So hopefully this will be the final time I'm looking at this bare insulation. I do need to panel this side. I do have the panel for it already. So I'll go ahead and just sweep all this up and hit it with the vacuum. And then I can start putting the wall panels back on. I'm gonna go ahead and just basically do the same thing. Put this other panel up, put the screws in it, and then I'm gonna go find some outlets to put it in here. And uh, wire in this distribution here at the bottom, put some fuses in, and uh, just basically get this uh, kind of prepped for outlets and cabinets and all that fun stuff. All right, so now that we got that wrapped up, I figured I'd come down here and install this six-way fuse block. I've got a bunch of ring terminals and connectors and everything, so um, I'll go ahead and show you kind of how I mount this up. And we've got my buddy Teddy here. He insisted on coming back out to the van with me to do some work late night. You are a goofy little boy. That's what you're doing.
All right, it's looking good so far. Just had to untape these so they weren't in a bind, kind of separate them. And now these are fitting nice back into that channel. So I'll go ahead and just put some screws back into this board right here, get that all sealed up. And then we're gonna start making the enclosure for the 120 breaker box that's also going to house a lot of the 24 volt stuff. It's got 15 different circuit receptacles, I guess you'd call them, that eliminates the need for distribution blocks like this. It's kind of tough, in my opinion, to make these look really good after you have so many wires running in and out of them. It's possible, but there's nothing neater like not seeing wires at all to begin with. So. In my opinion, that's just the way to go.